welcome to a News Capital production where we tell the story of people that own local restaurants. Today, we're catching up with Justin at J-Bo's Cajun Fusion right here in McAllister in a little production we like to call, mm, that's tasty. Justin Wimsett, my establishment is J-Bo's Cajun Fusion. I'm originally from McAllister, Oklahoma, born and raised, gotcha, gotcha. as well as my family, which most of them originated from Crowder. Gotcha, so local, born and bred. <laughs> Very much so. Gotcha, gotcha. So where did the name come from for the restaurant? When I was a kid, my Uncle Bronk used to call me J-Bo, so I was trying to come up with something to call my place. and. J-Bo come to mind and I just put the Cajun twist on the end of the boat. I got you. I got you. So why Cajun food? Well, uh, as a small child, I was actually fascinated with Cajun food and I used to make my cousins very angry at me on Saturday mornings because <laughs> it was either cartoons or Justin Wilson. Well, I would always beat him to the television and be watching Justin Wilson. And that's at a very young age, say six and seven. And uh, I happened to marry a Cajun woman when I was young. <laughs> about 1998 and I moved to South Louisiana for five years and she couldn't cook a can of corn, poor gal. <laughs> so I spent all my time when I come in from offshore and whatnot at her grandma's house and that's where I learned a lot of these recipes are 100 years or older and I was trusting these recipes to never give them to anybody and I will not. My son will be the only person that gets them. So the majority of my items are not cook and held. Cook and hold, it's cook and go out the window. In the, in the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> because I can't, I don't have the power. And you can't get the power. I mean, I've actually tried to go straight off my generator. I can't do that. Just to do that many warmers. And warmers pull a lot of juice. I can come with my mouth. <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's all just a big learning curve. And I'm going to tell you what. I've had to swallow a lot of jagged pills. <laughs> I sold, I sold myself to do this, so that's what I'm going to do. So, what was it like that first day when you opened up? Where the you? very first day, I yeah. had a different trailer. It that's was, true. I was sold out in uh, like two hours. Man, what you cook that day? I think it was blackened catfish, mother and crawfish, a two fan corn macho. Is what I remember. I'm getting kind of old. I said, well, I, I know we've, we've all slept since then, but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But the first uh, month, it was a whirlwind. It really was. I couldn't believe. Whoa. Couldn't believe how fast I was selling out. And then I got called to do a, ironically, a catering gig on a, a frack, an oil field location. Mm -hmm. And I was gone for about 40 days. And it was because they had COVID restrictions. They didn't want people running to town and coming right. back. You know? Right. And uh, that was like gangbusters. That was pretty awesome. And that's what allowed for this, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, wait, that got me thinking about 20 different things here. My head's straight. But uh, when I got back, it was like everything was different because nobody could work. So the lack of people having money was, so I'm thinking, what am I going to do? <laughs> right. So it all changed. I mean, I had, to, I had to make adjustments there because I have never had to deal with anything like that in my life. Because I've really never had a job that dealt with sales. Mm -hmm. I've always been in the wool field. So it's been really strange. And believe me, I've asked advice to people that own restaurants in town and other towns, and they're like, look, just hang on, because this is going to be a rough ride. This is, this is a learning curve for everybody right now. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> See, to me, people saying they like it, as long as they're being honest about it, that's worth more than the price of food. The price of a meal and making a buck. That's what it's really all about. It's all about making someone smile from the belly, you know. I'm willing to listen to anything anybody's got to say about the catering. Mm -hmm. Is and what
what would de determine your cost is going to be your how many people and what kind of food you love. I don't have a set menu on catering. I kind of like I like I like to let the people determine what they want, right? And then I can work from there. Because I mean, I really have a really crazy range of what I can and can't do. I mean, about the only thing I don't do is Chinese and barbecue, and I try to stay away from Mexican. This town's pretty Mexican heavy. <laughs> I do keep all my Cajun very traditional. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't jack around. With it. I was given, especially if I'm cooking something that I was taught by my first wife's grandmother, I, I honor her with everything she taught me. Absolutely. I keep it exactly how she taught me. I have nothing written down. It's all right here. So if I ever get Alzheimer's, I'm screwed. <laughs> you're, you're done. <laughs> done like dinner. This saying on your shirt. En vie joie de vie. Crave the joy of living. Now, now is that something that, that you learned? meaning to me? Yeah. Of course. Everybody should crave the, uh, crave the joy of living. A lot of people have lost their joy. You know, with everything going on in the world, it's basically reminding me to not lose my joy, to, to keep it positive. You know, I'm doing what I love. You know? uh, you, <laughs> I keep telling myself what my grandma used to say: uh, if you do what you love for a living, you never work a day in your life. That's a lie, Grandma. <laughs> I've never worked so hard in my life. I've never hurt so bad in my life. But no, in all, in all seriousness, I do love what I do. It's hard. It's very hard. But uh, that's, that's just the ultimate thing. I'm crazy to enjoy living. So, so while he's eating it, E explain what's in the uh, crawfish monica. You got your butter. <laughs> That's the French crutch. Everything is better with butter. You have your trinity, which is onion, bell pepper, celery, and you got your pope, which is garlic. My own blend of Cajun seasoning, which I will never tell what that is. It's <laughs> my own. Uh, and a crawfish tail meat straight from Louisiana, packed in the head fat, and my own crawfish cream sauce, which that's my secret weapon. Yeah, well. And rotini pasta. It is a really tasty. <laughs> I like that, like you talked about the the really creamy with getting with the, with the pasta. It's all gotta marry, and uh, whenever you warm it together or cook it together, normally, what I do if I'm doing this at home or for a gathering at my house, I cook the pasta separate, obviously, get my sauce, and then I'll throw that sauce in the pasta pot and cook it together for about 15 minutes. That way you don't have your pasta sliding off your pot or your sauce sliding off your pasta. Right. Like you see in a lot of a lot of restaurants these days, because you know everything's got to be such high production that they can't sit there long enough and do it right. Right. Which, you know, teach their own. I'm still going to do it right. Best, the best way to reach me is 918-490-1672. The number is public. It's on my trailer, on my page. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook Messenger as well, although I'm not as apt to check those messages as I am to hear my phone ringing or check a text message on my phone. Uh, I do a number, of, a number of different things, and I'm willing to do anything to... Please your palate, just give me a shout. Well, that's it for now. Make sure you vote in our Reader's Choice Awards, which are open now. Vote for your favorite restaurants and many other categories. Also, make sure you tune in next week where we visit another restaurant and find out what makes people say, Mmm, that's tasty.